Mixcraft's clip automation lets you quickly and easily automate volume and panning, as well as high and low pass filters for individual audio or virtual instrument clips. Let's start by having a look at the clip automation on this Euro Bass 2 part right here. When I hover over this clip, you can see this horizontal line over here, as well as two blue dots on the end. These represent the clip automation. It's a lot easier to work with clip automation if we enlarge this clip vertically, so I'm going to go over here to the track list, and when I mouse over here, you can see this turns into two arrows, and I'm going to click and drag down, and this way we can make our track height much taller. Now we can see the horizontal line a little more clearly. And if I click on it, these blue dots, called points, will appear. If I hover on one of these dots, you'll see that the cursor turns into a plus sign. I can click and drag these dots, and here you can see the line gets dragged up. I'm going to solo the track and we can listen to what I've done. As you can hear, I've made the volume curve go up and down. These dots can be freely edited by hovering over them with a the mouse, and you'll see the cursor turns into a plus sign, and then we just click and drag them. Now obviously I've just edited the volume automation for this clip, but up here we have a pop-down menu, and here we have some options. I can select panning, low-pass filter cutoff, low-pass filter resonance, high-pass cutoff, and high-pass resonance. So we'll put this on panning, and we can see the curve disappears because now this line represents panning. So I'm going to drag this up here, and I'll create a bunch of points by clicking, and drag these to make a crazy panning envelope curve. So now when I play back, we can hear the sound go back and forth between the channels. Now keep in mind that our volume automation is still intact. We can view it by clicking up here again and selecting volume, and it's still there. If you right click on a point, we've got some extra editing features. You can edit an exact value, and this means you can select the value very precisely by either moving the slider or by manually typing in a value. And you can see the point moves. To delete a point, right click on it and select delete point. In addition to volume and panning, there's also some really fun filters to play with. I'm going to start by moving this point all the way down here, which will close the low pass filter all the way. And then I'll create another point over here and open it all the way up. So now it's going to go from 0 to 100. And we hear the low pass filter opening sound that you've probably heard on analog synthesizers. We can make that even more dramatic by cranking up the resonance. So now the cutoff automation is going to be hidden. But let's click down here and drag and move up the resonance. And since I want the resonance to be constant, I'm just going to move both sides up. Now we have the familiar wet wah kind of resonance sound. Da -da -da. If you want to move an area between two points and let me make two new points just to make this really clear. If I hold down the shift key and move onto the line, you'll see the cursor turns into up-down arrows. And now I can move a line in between two points. So this is nice when you want to move a plateau, as it were. Finally, we have a high-pass filter, which isn't seen as commonly on synthesizers. And it works in the opposite way of a low-pass filter in that it lets high frequencies through, but it doesn't let low frequencies through. So it has a different kind of sound. So let's select that. High pass cutoff, and I'm going to do the same kind of thing I did before where I have it open all the way. And I'm going to put a bunch of resonance in here from the get-go, and let's hear what this sounds like. And keep in mind, of course, you could use these filters on any kind of sound. You could use it on vocals or drum loops, and it could be really dramatic. Keep in mind that if you have a clip that has a bunch of automation you'd like to repeat, you can easily make copies of the clip by holding down Alt on your keyboard and then clicking and dragging the clip. There's also some hidden clip automation functionality under the sound menu. Make sure the clip is selected first by clicking on it. You'll see that it'll have a white outline. And then click on sound. And we'll go down to envelopes. And here are some cool options. If you want to get rid of all the automation on a clip, you can just hit reset envelope and everything will disappear. Invert envelope will actually reverse all the points. So let's have a look at this real quick, and you can see where it goes up and down there. So if I go to Invert, you'll see that everything flips from the top to the bottom, essentially. And this could be useful for a number of things. You can do some wacky things with volume or the filters. But this could also be really useful if you've done some crazy panning moves and you want to reverse them in the stereo spectrum. Now let's talk about Fade In and Fade Out. This is a really convenient feature for making quick fades. And the way it works is you can highlight a region at the beginning or end of the track. 
So I've highlighted the beginning here by clicking and dragging. And I'm going to right click to get to the envelopes menu. You can get to the same envelope either way from up here or from over here, but it's kind of easier to right click. So I'm going to right click and go to envelopes. And I'm going to choose fading because I'm at the beginning. And we have three choices. These don't actually affect the length of time in as much as they affect the curve. So for example, if I choose the fast one, you can see right there, and I'll play it back. And I'm going to undo it, and I'm going to choose slow just so you can see the difference. And here the curve shape is really different. The neat part about these envelopes is the points automatically scale to the length of the area you've selected. So, in other words, if I make a really long one over here, I'm going to right click, go to envelopes, and choose fade in again. And you can see the points go all the way across here. And now we can do the same at the end to make a fade out. I've highlighted this region by clicking and dragging. I'm going to right click and go to envelopes, fade out, and I'll use fast. And now when I play it back, The boost and reduce functions will simply take your entire curve and move it up or down. If I use the boost function, I could make it 25% louder, and everything moves up by 25%. And I can also reduce, say by 50%, for example, and everything gets much quieter. Da -da -da. And one other quick hint, if you'd like to reduce your track size back to normal, you can grab it right here and move it. But this can get a little confusing because all the tracks can be different heights and it's hard to get them back to the same height. So Mixcraft's programmers were kind enough to think about this situation and if you click view right here where it says all tracks height, you can select small, normal, or large. And I'm going to click normal and everything's back to regular height. 